Hey there guys, thanks for joining us on another Board Gaming Night. Tonight we're playing Risk Europe, the enhanced game of medieval conquest from Hasbro Games. Uh, with me I have Alan, <laughs> Squib, and Molo, this is his copy of the game. And yourself. Uh, and game. myself, Jason, I'm here too. Uh, right, so we're going to give you a quick brief description of the game. And the rules and the components and then we will start off the game play a few rounds and then we'll show you how the game flows and how the mechanics work uh, and then we'll come back with our verdict at the end so this is kind of like a standard risk it has similar standard risk rules but it has some interesting extras so first of all we all get our own factions with different units so we go like archers and siege weapons knights footmen, castles, and they all actually have a role in the game. So, for example, if you want to pause there, you can have a quick look. But uh, when you do combat, and you'll see you during the game blade turn, you go down this initiative order. So siege weapons will go first, they hit on a 3+, plus, then archers, then cavalry, and then you do the stand, if there's units to the left, you do the standard def defender rolls 2, attacker rolls 3, compare. Um, so there's that. Uh, each person will also start... Um, with a castle in their home territory, and uh, the castles, that, or the, the home territories, will have special abilities. For example, um, I am the Holy Roman Empire, and Rome is worth two crowns. Now why that's significant is because you win this game by getting seven crowns at the end of the turn. So we'll start off, obviously, with one, because we start off in an area that has a crown, and then you get crowns via attacking other cities that have the crowns, or by completing special missions. So this is a special missions deck, and I'll give this a shuffle again before we start. But when you play your action cards, one of the action cards allows you to draw two of these, choose one and put the other one at the bottom. If you complete it, it'll give you a special ability and also a crown. Ooh, that wasn't actually in focus. So I'll go back to those in a second. So each of us <coughs> also has a set of eight action cards. On your turn, you choose two of them, and you play them down, face down like that. And then, starting with the first player, he will play his first card, go around. When it comes back to you, you play your second card, and then that ends the round. Once, the ra once you've gone through your entire deck, you then get your deck back, and you can start playing again. And they do different things. Uh, for example, you have two of these, which is, you can either choose to tax your populace, or spend the money you've accumulated to buy more troops and castles with a nice little sheet like this which tells you the prices silver is one gold is five and they all have a specific trait as well so for example castles actually give you defense you can reroll dice you can only attack castles with siege weapons etc etc and crown cards obviously you can buy them with a cost of money um, you got movement cards you get two of those you've got cards like this with the fortify this at the top here is a special rule if you play this you get to do that special rule first which in this case is add three footmen to a city or four to a castle and then you can choose to expand or maneuver so there's eight of these two of each and then you've got two special ones which are these two so it's king me which allows you to get the first player marker and this is where you get those um, special cards where you can go for a mission and then siege assault which allows you to attack adjacent territories with your siege weapons and then potentially move into them. So, that as you can see has already changed a lot. Then you get other cities, they all have different abilities and triggered by different effects. For example like Madrid, when you tax Madrid you can place four footmen in Madrid for free. That's really good. Or Berlin allows you to expand after playing a maneuver card and castles cost three less money is really good and um, there's a limited supply of castles and you have a limited supply of different troops as you can see for example you get four siege engines 12 archers etc 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 and uh, this is how we started off i'm the holy roman empire squib is the the london boys um Swedish. yeah you're the sweeties and you're starting in russia Indeed. all right so that's the basics of the game um You'll see during the gameplay turn, play two of these cards, move, attack, screw each other over, pretty much as simple as that. First person to end the round on seven will win the game, and that's that. Alright, 
So we'll start and come back to you in a second. All right, so we're back for the gameplay turn. And uh, I'll give you a quick update of where we are. We've had one rotation of the cards, so eight actions basically. And uh, it's quite heated already. As you can see, the Holy Roman Empire has got put to the south of the year. The English have pushed all the way through France and just taken Zurich from the Holy Roman Empire. The Scandinavians have done what they do best and take colonized the north of Europe. <laughs> They've um, pushed all the way around into the top of the Russia, which you can't really see. But I'm going to zoom into where Alice is down there. And have taken actually Kiev, which is Molo's home capital. Um, which is why they're doing so well, because they got all the north over there. they got a couple of abilities from Stockholm, Kiev, and Berlin. So that's three major cities to hold. Um, and the scores, as you can see over here, is the blue have five, so they're two crowns short, and then green and red in second place, and the purple are getting a smattering, of, or a beating. <laughs> All right, so we're basically what we're going to do now is we're going to choose from our deck of cards. We're going to choose two actions, and then we're going to go into orders. Um, Scoob is the first player as he's played the last King Me card, and we'll get going from there. Everyone chosen? Mm -hmm. yep. I've chosen yep. my two, so go okay. for it. First action. First action. I'm going to fortify with four footmen in my castle in Lorraine. Okay. So that's a bonus action that you can do on the top of Fortify, which I'll show you quickly over there. Uh, you can either add three footmen to a city. A city is just one of the, the major areas that have a crown on. And then you can either expand or maneuver. Expand is obviously attack a new territory, even if it's neutral. And maneuver is maneuver two spaces in your own supply-lined territories. So what are you doing? I'm then going to expand into Burgundy. Oh, these goddamn English pushing heavily on the Holy Roman borders. We were actually worried um, after the first round that there might not actually be a second round as the, the flags were moving up pretty quickly. So that's your turn. What are you doing, Alan? I am doing a King Me action. All right, so that means you get the first player token, and then you also get um, two of the what are they called, crown cards, the mission cards. You're going to look at the two of them and then choose one and put the other one at the bottom. Actually, Alan's actually completed his first one, which was to capture someone else's stronghold. Uh, to castle. attack and clear an opponent's city territory using the siege assault. Yeah. Which Quite he, difficult. Which is really good for him now because that special ability that he got from that was um, when sieges, siege engines attack, and uh, it shows you over there, they roll two dice per unit. So one siege engine rolls two dice. His siege engines now roll three dice and hit on a three plus. That's really, really good. Alright. Uh, I'm going to draw income. So we get two, six, nine, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen income. Okay, so just a quick note on that. King Me allows you to either tax your, your supply line or spend your money you have. Supply lines are based on connected territories. The cities themselves, with the numbers, they give you that much tax. Cities or areas without anything are just one if you control it. So he's obviously getting two from there, four from there, three from there, and four from there. And then one there, one there, one there, one there. So that's a nice, healthy supply line. Which the English are just ignoring. <laughs> All right, that's your turn. Yes. My luck. Okay, I'm going to king me, and I will tax. All right, so you get the first player token now. Uh, that will only obviously trigger once we've finished this set of two cards. Okay. Interesting. Are you going to be taxing or or spending? What money have you got? Two. So, Four. I, so I suspect you're going to be taxing. I, I will be taxing. So it's ten money. So, nope. all right, I am going to be doing Siege Assault. This is do May. So I'm going to attack one adjacent territory with my capable, so. ballistas over here, and they're going to attack this territory over here. There's two of them, so I'm going to roll four dice, needing threes up. 
That's it. So those those two I did. And now, as a as that that was a bonus action on my card, I can now expand or maneuver. I am gonna do a maneuver uh, expand action, which will be him and these two. Can you expand into the territory that you didn't attack the initial siege? Yeah, there you could just as long as it's not engaged. And it wasn't engaged. Oh. And not overseas either. You can't shoot ballistas across the water. <laughs> For some reason. I don't know why. But you can shoot the uh, poles. <laughs> into <chasing> areas. <laughs> okay, that's, that's my turn done. So, as you notice, we're not doing combat there. Combat won't take place until we finish both cards in this circular round. So it goes back to um, Squib to do his turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to fortify again. So you can put four dudes in a castle, mm -hmm. and then expand or maneuver. I'll expand. <coughs> I had this thought out. I did. Honest. Honest. Ugh, that's not good. <laughs> it's not terrible because you can't take your castle with that stuff. No. But that's your turn done. That's Alan? Done. I spend. So I've got 22. So. 22. Money. <laughs> 20. Right, so siege engines obviously cost 10 each. And. Are you buying an archer as well? Oh, right, two footmen. Yep, I need something that uh, if I do start losing people, then... Bullet munchers. Yeah. <laughs> Operation meat shield. Right, what are you doing, Milo? Just so by the way, you can be eliminated in this game. <laughs> Indeed, it's a concern. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spend. I am going to buy on the siege engine. And uh, two archers. And the places you can recruit, you can only recruit in castles or cities. So if you want to recruit in areas like this, you need to build castles there. Kiev is the only place that allows you to do that without, you know, that sort of ability. I am going to fortify. So it's add three footmen to a city or four to a castle and then expand or maneuver. So I'm going to add three to a city, which is over there. And then I'm going to expand to Valencia. Ah, I just realized you can't see that. <laughs> so I put three guys in a city over there. And I've expanded across the river to Valencia. And that is a, is a full rotation of our two cards each. Now we do combats. Uh, we can choose where we want to start. Do you want to start over there? So first, we should. first things first. Do you have any siege engines? I, I do see. not. So then we go to... Um, archers. How many archers you got in there? Um, two, I think. One. One. I can see two. Oh, two. Two. And there's a couple of guys lined up. So two, two dice, needing fives up to hit, as you can see by that. One hit would kill him. No, nope, he's still alive. Uh, then we go to cavalry. You've got one cavalryman. He needs a three plus to strike, yeah. and he kills me. Don't and that is a victory. So all these guys. And now control Lombardi. So that's that combat done. Now we go to combat over in Constantinople. <laughs> Constantinople. <laughs> right, so Siege Engine goes first. Two dice on a three plus. I just rolled double six. Oh my God. <laughs> and he's dead. But that is more significant than the fight that just happened over there. Because this place is a crown. Mm -hmm. um, so green moves up one and purple moves one down. Constantinople. And I get Constantinople's ability. Every time you recruit a siege weapon, place four footmen with it for free. That's pretty good. And I just want to show you the score. That's what the score looks like at the end of that round. Now we go to the next round where we choose two more um, um, action cards. And Molo is the first player now. Mm -hmm. Do I take the do I take the risk? Fuck. I'm gonna do this. Alright, I've chosen. So first player, you I what are you going to do? This card is fortify, expand, or maneuver. 
So, fortify. You've got no castles, so it's going to be three guys in a city you own somewhere. You're going to do well. Is it going to be Buddha? It might be. It might be Pest. I haven't decided <laughs> yet. All right, yeah. and then uh, are you expanding or manoeuvring? I, I might expand as it goes. Yeah. All right. Okay, I am going to um, expand, I think. We will expand with that. Oh, that's quite annoying. All right, I am going to do a fortify order. So I can add three footmen to a city or four to a castle. I'm going to add four to this castle right here. And then I'm going to expand into one territory. I'm going to expand into there. <laughs> now, you might wonder why the hell would I do that. Because there's a shitload of red guys and I just went in with one guy. Combat is not done until the end of the round. <laughs> that is, that's ingenious. <laughs> and... You can't You've just tied up a massive yes. amount of my force. <laughs> so basically, this guy right here is Gandalf, and he's shouting out the immortal words, Alan. You shall not pass. <laughs> yes. So that was a bit cheesy, but yes. <laughs> you just got stitched right up. Okay, you'll go. <laughs> I'm not just a pretty <laughs> face, man. <laughs> not, not even a pretty face. This is your go yet. Shut up! <laughs> right, what are you doing, man? I'm playing a split explat. Oh, that, 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 that's really throwing me. <laughs> Entire plans changed. A split expand. Split, 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 yes. Here, that can be painful. Right. In which case, it can be a maneuver instead if you need to. Plans are changing. Oh, I've held him off for a bit. Yeah, you beat him off for a while. So split expand, I didn't mention, you can choose one territory and split into two different areas. You know. I'm done. I'm doing a fortify. Do I go? One. Two, three. Four. Oh, you're in there. Oh. I'm done. What genius. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Marlon, what you got? <laughs> uh, guess what rule I forgot about. Let's, let's see if we can guess before I turn this card over. Can you? Can you? Can you name it? You can't see just salt over over yeah! <laughs> <laughs> over water. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm very proud of that. So this siege weapon right here can target that area, that area, or that area. Indeed, it can. But it's so close. Yeah, I can see them. Um, They're right there. <laughs> Uh, and then you can expand or maneuver. I hmm. bit back. Now I I can do that at any point in my turn. Though, can't I can't either see. That's the first thing. The first thing you do. Are you sure? No, oh, actually, no. You, I think you can do that. Yeah, yeah, we can do them at any time. But yeah, you can't do that if they're engaged. No, obviously. Oh. <laughs> can I ask? And am, am I allowed to? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, you can just negotiate. Yeah. What's your second card? Is it you don't have to card? tell him. Is it a manoeuvre card? Would you like to be free to make that manoeuvre? Oh no, I've changed. my plan changed. Are you sure? Due to uh, a certain individual. <laughs> they're, they're are you, are you planning on moving to Bavaria and shooting that one guy there? <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, shooting that guy just so he could come in at you. Well, this but guy, you can't tell me. he moves his... Um, it has to be unengaged there, perhaps. Oh. I thought it was just me that had to go. <laughs> just snipe him out with a rock. It's like one guy in a horde of Englishmen getting mm. smashed Oof. by a rock. I, I guess then, as, as you've been such a dick about it, we're going to have to pop over here and then siege this area here. I guarantee you're going to roll a one or a two, you know. <laughs> no, he might roll two ones. <laughs> two ones? You roll two dice because it's a siege assault. Yeah. Oh, cool. Three's ten. Two dead. Blah. Awesome. Everything. Right, my turn. Uh, I'm going to do a tax. Now, this, uh, this is not the greatest time to tax in the situation of the game, but... No, no, really? You're just moments away from it being worse than it could be. <laughs> so I've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
plus four there is 16. And my card is collect 15 or more coins with one tax order. So I've achieved this bonus, which means I get another Ooh. crown. Uh, what's my special ability from this? Each time you recruit a siege weapon, place two footmen with it for free. You may now purchase siege weapons for eight coins instead of ten. Nice. I like that. I think Jason's just taken it. No, I could have taken it if I didn't have to do that because I could have moved, instead of moving in there, I could have moved in there and that would have been game. I would have won. But instead I had to send this one little well, monkey into there. As long as you hadn't lost a crown territory. Yeah, moment. but I mean, that was my second action now. So there's two actions left and then it's the end of the round. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this place. <laughs> Scrib's right. Scrib's not happy with me. Not at all. <laughs> What's yours? Siege Assault. Nice. I'm going to two shots. What's this one random guy here? Uh, I didn't expand into that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I didn't even when? see that. On my previous action. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like that. You sneaky little bugger. <laughs> so everyone's so pinning you down. Doing that, Take yeah. your two shots. <laughs> Take out my... Two you can't. No, you I can't. can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So that army's stuck there. That army's stuck there. Your expand or maneuver is going to have to be from England. Right. Well. As it happens, in this situation, you can actually expand into there if you really wanted to. Uh, not expand, maneuver If you there. really struggle beating because one that, guy off on that, your own. You are the defender there and that's your territory. All right. You're coming I'm, for me as soon as you moved. All right. You'll go, Alan. Thank you. Uh, mine. Uh, one siege attack assault. an adjacent territory. I'm going to go for this one. Oh, I think Alan might Can win. I have... oh, I'll just roll this twice. How many sieges did you go to? Four. Four. So <laughs> I, get, I get three per because of my... Oh, oh my god. He's going to absolutely <laughs> obliterate Warsaw. So... Oh, oh no, he's one, one. <laughs> this is going to be the bullet muncher. And seven. Seven. Oh. Three, six. Oh, How man, just six, the... You can't kill him. <laughs> Just enough as well. When you rolled like five twos there, I was like, whoa. Son of a biscuit. And now, now you can leave that there, because he's going to take yeah, that down. It marks that somebody owns it. Okay? <laughs> it's not within the rules to leave it there. So blue is going to move up one, Ooh, and hold on, hold purple on. goes back one. Unless you don't want to move into there, then I've just done that for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's definitely going down. Yeah, I've got him. Oh my goodness. I think I might have. Oh man, if I didn't have to do that, I could have won. Damn you, Squib. With your blumbasting English. <laughs> yeah, this has happened. Yeah, this is after all risk. Yeah. Why not? Because I've got a castle. You so obviously we've had two rounds so far, so we've oh, got right. can, four cards left, also, right. which means obviously two more rounds left. So these are the two cards. Well, there's a lot of guys have to... but I'm just saying, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Well, as long as it's fine. Uh, oh, and I get four for that. Yeah. That was done. There you go. All right, so we choose into the third so round. We combat. Choose a... Oh, yeah. Where's the combat? Oh yeah, the epoxy yeah, little... <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, well... And this might change what cards I choose. Do you want to kill him first? No, so, no, no. Alright, so your siege weapon, two shots, threes. Yeah. Yep, he's dead. Oh, it's close there. And then over here you've got two archers because you don't have a siege weapon in mine. Nope. Nope. Uh, uh, one knight, so three plus. Yep. Yeah, he's dead. Blah. There you go. Successfully won all your combats this turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, you no. you guys get the general idea of what's happening. Um, I'm going to give you a quick scan of what the board looks like because obviously we kept it really steady. We have very limited actions left, and uh, I don't know, I don't know if I have enough cards to keep pushing one guy into the wall of death. <laughs> uh, Milo's looking a bit shaky here. He's tried everyone. <laughs> just try. Oh, I think we might just have to eliminate you. <laughs> Oh, man, look at that. I'm so close. Just between the border of Valencia and Madrid could have been victory for the Holy Roman Empire. Instead, I'm looking at this horde of English. But now, he's declared war on you, man. What are you going to do? 
You gonna take it to him? We'll see. <laughs> All right, so we'll stop here. We'll carry on with the game. It might not be that much longer anyway. Uh, might only just finish this round, this, and then we'll come with the back with our verdict and stuff. All right, so the game is finished, and uh, quite some brutal maneuvers towards the end there. But it actually only lasted one more phase after we finished filming. Uh, we, I've still got two cards left from that round, uh, which was interesting. Sometimes. So the score is Molo survived the game <laughs> on one flag that he started on. That is uh, difficult. Yeah, different one. <laughs> Um, and then these two fought for second and third quite compatibly, uh, but Alan has taken second place, and obviously I've got first. And it was because of Madrid I finally got there. I split expanded. I put one into Navarone or Navarre, just in case, just in case something came across there. <laughs> but uh, Madrid kept me that victory, and uh, I had to convince Molo to do the same tactic that I used on Squib. I with so, Mo so just wanted to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> But well, there we go. So that's the full game of Risk Europe. Not very long at all. Except when it was Alan's turn. Seven rounds. <laughs> what did you think, Alan? It's a lot better than normal Risk. I really like it. Um, yeah, it's a lot more dynamic. There was a lot more going on and a lot more kind of tactical play in what you're getting. Because normally you just literally just accrue numbers. And then that defines what unit you've got and makes no difference. But yeah, no, this was, it was really good. I hate risk normally. And <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I really like it. How much would you give it out of ten? Six and a half, seven. Okay, that's not bad considering it's risk. Yeah, and yeah. if it was normal risk, it'd be like three. Yeah. <laughs> what so, was the b the best parts that you liked about the, what they added to this? I liked that we both dicked over Squib in the exact same way. <laughs> same um, yeah. No, um, I like the fact that. You've got different units that, do, that operate in different ways. For instance, you can't attack an area that's got a castle unless you've got siege weaponry. That was a really interesting dynamic and really forced your hand on that. Um, the cards and the fact that it's, it's forcing you to basically have a certain number of, of cycles before you can repeat certain actions was interesting. Because it means you can't just wolf over an entire region. You have to do certain actions to kind of pad out your, uh, pad out your turns. So, no, yeah. that's fair enough. I have a, I have a similar theory to, uh, feeling to you as well. I mean, I, I enjoyed this. I thought it was good fun to play. I played this last week as well. And uh, for the amount of the money that they charged, it was like 15 quid for this yeah. game, which is not bad at all. I, I used to, I hated Risk as well before. I thought it was really boring and sterile. Um, whereas Conquest of Narath was my game of choice for this sort of type of game, uh, which is basically the same sort of thing. You know, area control, lots of dudes on a map, and you just go around smashing each other um, but this one adds a few more extra bits i mean i think these these cities with the extra abilities are really good really powerful they almost make the game almost slightly broken on a site because they're so good and if you can get combo a few of them together you're really doing well um, the castles make a great addition i think these um, mission cards give you a little mm. focus and interesting things to do i think there could have been a few more of these that would have been better like because i think there's maybe 12 or so in the box do you know how many of these matter? I have no idea. But we had eight out. Yeah. So, but they're that, that still really cool. They add a nice little addition to the game. I think the victory condition of getting... Eight. The eight. Yeah. So, um, I think getting seven crowns to victory is a much better thing than having to control a certain amount of territories or whatever the case may be. I like that. Um, I love the fact that you've got the different troops and they actually have different abilities. I mean, this is really cool. And then you still do this little nice risk thing at the end as well, so... That's really cool, and uh, action selection for the cards, making your turns a lot more interesting and interesting decisions. I think this is probably easily, easily the best version of Risk out there. I mean, I really liked Risk Legacy. I thought Risk Legacy was brilliant, but that was more of a feel than the actual game mechanics, because the game mechanics was just basically Risk. Whereas this, it transcends that much, much better. But in saying that, it's still just dudes on a map, roll dice, attack each other sort of thing, so... I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10 for myself. How about you, Scoop? This is your first time on the channel. Enjoy being on video? I haven't got much choice, really. <laughs> it's either that or go. Uh, um, <laughs> what did you think? No, I really enjoyed the game. Um, I've got old memories of Risk playing it with my dad and, you know, leaving the board set out for three days while we still kept playing it. Turn off so. to turn. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, the, pay, the speed of it was much better. Um, 
especially when initially we all seem to just be building up our little forces and then all of a sudden and no contra combat happened at all and then all of a sudden we actually started doing stuff mm. yeah rather than just amassing I was almost concerned that we would win on the first set of cards. I was like, holy shit, this game's going to go really quick. But yeah, no, the, like you said, like, well, following off from what you guys have said with the different dynamic of the actually having tactics from the actual what cards you play when, that limits obviously just steamrolling someone when you've built up a massive army. Yeah. Which was my issue. But I couldn't <laughs> do that. I think I still had that same old risk mentality going where I'm, right, I'm just going to go that way. And it didn't work. Mm. As we can tell by Alan coming second. What, what? <laughs> Over me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I love it. And the fact that it's seven victory points or seven crowns to be the the victor rather than world domination and having to wipe out everybody off the board. Yeah, easily better. Theory, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't even completed the whole board. Not every territory is taken. And no, yeah, and if, it, if you have a normal game of risk, every single territory is taken and even in fact yeah. madrid was one of the special cities which gives you um one of these yeah don't remind me yeah <laughs> one of these tars and it was the last city to be taken in the in the game mm. so that's really interesting as well yeah carry on where, where would you give it out of 10 i'd say eight yeah well yeah, I, I think it's definitely worthy of people that like risk and that sort of thing how about you molo well i i Kind of got a bit of a uh, no one cares. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Carry on. Anyway, it's kind of got a bit of a curve on there. It's really quick, which I didn't expect initially. Yeah, it's um, super quick. And um, yeah, it's it risk really just as a token effort. It just does that last little bit to be risk. You do that last little bit of combat at the end there, mm. and it's kind of the map kind of plays out almost like a risk map, but you don't play it at all like that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I like the, the different mechanisms within the game. And um, I think I'd need to play it again. I'm going to give it a safe 7 at the minute, but it could well go up higher than that. But it would need another play. Now, you know, the one thing I, I thought about last week when we played this and this week as well, I don't understand why this can't be played as a 5 player. Because I felt in last week's game and this week's game, there's so much territory on the edit. I mean, you had so much territory and uh, I thought you were going to win this easily by the amount of territory and money you could accumulate. But obviously the fact that you only need seven victory points has hampered that sort of strategy. Well, your, the ability of Rome giving you two um, two victory points was... I mean, that was a good clincher. That was mm. a, a nice position to be in. It was not particularly um, helpful throughout the game, but when you need it, it's that extra point there. Um, and it meant that I just had to take even more land, even more cards, just to keep up but i think um i think perhaps it might be four player just because the maths on four player is a lot easier for how many cards everybody gets and um, well that's true i i mean this is hasbro so they're not known for making loads of expansions <laughs> for a game so mm. this is probably it this is what you're going to get that would turn into a proper knife fight on the left <laughs> yeah. five players on this right you got to get seven points mm. So, uh, but I thought it was good. It was really fun. It was really entertaining. I mean, this this we had a dinner break between the two rounds, um, but I think this was probably forty five minutes easily, mm. easily. Oh yeah, I and mean, we could probably got it in quicker than that. Yeah, <laughs> it really jumped on you when mm. it happened, especially so, towards the end. So there you go. If you're interested in getting a copy of Risk Europe, you can get one on Amazon for about fifteen bucks yep, or pounds. Time to get it as yeah. well. So yeah, anyway. and it's I think it's worth if you if you like this type of game, the dudes on a map, area control. Dice rolling, definitely go have a look and see what you like. Thanks for watching. <laughs>